Welcome back to Ralph Pinson's podcast, where ancient wisdom meets modern man. This episode was sponsored by Avraham Ben Moshe, in honor of Rufua Shalema Ukrevel for his father. Today's episode is part one of a special Sukkot edition Q&A, and the sixth in our Q&A series. What does the Dalad medium represent? This is the uh, Lulav and the Esrug, uh, with the Hadassim and the Aravus. Um, I, it's, it's connected to joy. How, how is it that this, this reflects and awakens joy within us? So you're assuming that it, that it does awaken joy, right? So it's connected to joy. Now, what does it have to do with joy? So you're asking that it's, it should be connected to joy, right? Because that's yeah, what it seems like. That seemingly, the Sukkot is connected to joy. And how is it connected to joy? So, the idea is like this. The big idea is like this. Now we'll see how it works in its details. The big idea is that Yichud, unity, comes together with joy. Simcha and Yichud is, is, is a part of the same thing. Joy and unity are the same thing. It's actually a Rashi and Ksuvas on page 8a. Rashi talks about this a little bit, why we, why we talk about joy when we talk about marriage. That dveikus, yichud, dveikus and, and simcha, unity and, and joy come together. We'll, we'll understand how this works, but this is an important premise. They're synonymous, you say? They're like synonymous. Okay. They're almost synonymous. Like when you have dveikus, you have joy. When you have unity, okay. when there's something that becomes unified, that's a better word. Then there's inherent yeah, joy. Yeah, there's inherent joy. In the, in the process of the unification of that, that, that creates, that there's, there's an inherent joy. Um, so let's uh, let's understand that a second. The um, the entire idea of sukkahs in general, before we get to the four species, the four the four types, is that sukkahs is actually called chaga asif, the time of of gathering, and that means that you're gathering pieces. Piece, literally, it's like it's a harvest season, like on a physical level, on a seasonal level, an agricultural level. So it's 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 a it's a season where you know it's at the end of the, the end of the summer, beginning of the fall, the beginning before the the winter season comes, and you gather up all the all the produce in the field, and it's a time when you gather everything up, and that that itself brought a certain type of joy. Like I'll know, like I'm going to survive through the winter. That was like you know that was a, a very simple a simple definition of what that meant in an agricultural society. Um, the joy of knowing the, of survival, but the gathering of things, the knowing, okay, I have this, this amount of potatoes and this amount of ca- cabbage or whatever. But there's like a deeper level. There's, there's the Chag Asif, can, can this idea of, ga- of gathering together, of tr- drawing things together, creating a yichud, creating this unification, is, uh, is on, all, on multiple levels. This exists on all different levels of existence, like physically, like, you know, in terms of uh, agriculture. But you see this actually in the Torah itself, like this year, for example, is uh, is the year of Hakal, right? Hakal means the year that that in the in the ancient world, and some people say we should, you know, that, that in the ancient, especially in the ancient times, in times of the temple, times of the base of English, the Jews would gather together. That was Hakal. Hakal means to gather together. So there was something about the gathering together, um, and it's interesting that the Hakal year, which is like the same year this year, is comes after the year of Shemitah. So in the Shemitah year, which is the seventh year of every seventh cycle, every seventh year you left, you actually left the the, the, the produce foul. So you didn't you didn't work the land, which means there was nothing to gather. There was no harvest. So the Torah is actually saying, in a very subtle way, when there's nothing to gather on on a on vegetables or, or your produce, and then gather the people. So besides for Shemitah, at the end of the year, there's still a Chag Asif. It still represents a, a time of gathering. It's just not gathering of, of produce because there's nothing to gather, but you're gathering the people. So there's, there's, the Torah actually already hints to this idea that the, the gathering is, is something very connected. So let's let, we'll start off like this. Like there's something about this idea of um, of of the of the Chag Asif, the time of gather, the a time of gathering which brings joy. And this is the way the Rambam Maimonides writes about this in the, in the in the guide to the Perplex, in the third chapter, third part. Now that's the idea of the joy, and so why these specific these specific elements, these specific species? So the Rambam classically gives like a very rational reason. It says because number one, these are things that are found throughout all the land of Israel. These are produce that can be you can pick up in anywhere. You can pick it up in the Galil. You can pick it up anywhere in the middle of Israel or in the south and the north. You can always get these 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 species. 
Um, they are beautiful. They're very beautiful uh, things and uh, veg vegetations or fruit, and they not they don't they don't wither quickly. So it could actually you can you can hold them for like seven days and they don't they don't wither. Technically, they shouldn't wither as quickly. Maybe they're always a little bit different, but that generally they, they don't wither. Which means the reason why they were they were taken they were taken is because because of its beauty and its endurance and its uh, and its and its uh, availability. Um, but they also represent they also represent four types of, of vegetations that grow in the different parts of the, of the land. So, for example, like, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the willows um, grow next to water, Avernachal. Now, whether it's literally water or it's seeping from water, it has to be literal water, but it grows next, it, needs, it needs a lot of water to, to be nourished. Um, the, 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 the lulav, which is a, a, day, a, a day tree, is... is uh, it doesn't need any water. It actually can grow in the desert. So it represents the opposite. Uh, an esrig it has to has a certain type of climate that actually needs to be fed throughout the entire se four seasons. It grows throughout the entire year. And then in, in the plains is where the where the hadas the myrtles grow. So you have like things that are grow in, in the desert, things that goes in, next to water, things things that grow particularly throughout the entire year, or things that grow in the regular plains. So they represent like four different types of climates, really, essentially. These, these four vegetations and what you're doing is you're you're bringing all these climates together holding them in your hand in a, in a form of vegetation a form of life and that's a type of gathering of, on a very physical level of the gathering of the different types of, 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 of fruit of these types of different types of vegetation and uh, and, that, and that brings and that brings joy that brings the type of joy of the gathering of these types of elements together. And, the, and and because of its beauty and and its endurance, etc., that, that that's what these are those particular, but also because they actually represent different parts of the of the country of the on the land, of the landscape, and like the Sefer Chinuch writes, one of the early classic commentators writes that what you're saying is these fruits bring joy. I'm going to bring my joy to Hashem. So whenever I'm experiencing joy, the joy should be an elated joy, a spiritual joy, and I'm I'm directing it towards towards Hashem. So this is one level of gathering. That brings like a physical like sensation of joy, the joy of some of holding something that's that's beautiful and something that represents something, and and, and bringing them together. That's on a very like on a very simplistic understanding of what the idea of joy. Then there's like there's this idea of what the Chazal already the sages develop and, and speak about, um, in the Medrash Rabbah and Vayikra talks about in great length, which is that they these types of four species actually represent also four types of people. Um, some people have, you know, a beauty. Some these 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 four types. Some uh, like the like the esro, for example, is the the citron type of fruit has both a delicious taste. It tastes very nicely, and it looks very beautiful, and it has and has and a beautiful smell. So it's something that that it gives off a scent, which means it externally beautiful. It gives off a scent, but also internally, when you open it up, it actually tastes very very nicely. Some of them give a scent, but actually don't have any taste, like like the myrtle, the adasin. Some some only give it uh, 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 the taste, and they don't have. Some don't have the taste, and and what the medrash is saying, the sages tell us, the rabbis tell us that they represent the four types of people, four types of Jews. There's some people that are filled with external good actions, which means externally they're doing a lot of good things in this world, and then they're also, and then if you cut them open, like if you really get into them, so to speak, they're full of taste. So they're they're, they're saturated with learning and, and scholarship, and and, and have a, a deep inner life. Some people are very externally beautiful and they do a lot of beautiful things in the world and it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing but they don't have like a real rich inner life some people have a very rich inner life but they don't project anything outwardly and some people god forbid you know or just don't have any not a rich inner life not a rich outer life and what the idea of bringing these four species together is to draw them together that's the achtos that's the idea of the of the unity of these of these four it's the drawing of these four things together and and that itself brings joy. So it also represents within a person himself, right? This, this, these are all traits within them. Sometimes a person feels that they have a rich inner life and a rich outer life. Sometimes they feel like depleted of the inner life for whatever because the things a lot of things are going on. So their inner life. Sometimes they feel depleted of the outer life. They can't really express anything because they, they they're not in the right conditioning. So it's like bringing the different parts within Claudius or within the people of Israel together, like this type of unity within that. And then also within their own within within our own self. So this is also like a type of drawing things together, which brings which are, which brings joy, 
Incidentally, before we just said about the, about the, the vegetation, the vegetation itself, each of these four themselves have a, a type of a unifying factor, which means that the 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 lulav is in order for it to be a kosher lulav has to be not open, which means it has to be kothos, has to be t- uh, like closed, which means it's drawn together. An eser has to feed from all the seasons, which represents the idea of yichud, of unity. Uh, uh, Aravos, which is the, the, the willows, are called Achavun. They're actually called brothers because they grow in bunches. And the Hatasim have to have three in each one. That's a correct, that's the best kosher Hatasim, which is the myrtles, which means also represent the idea of unity. So there's, there's, there's a concept of drawing things together in unity. Then there's like the more cosmic level, which is rooted in the Zoyer, but and the Ramban, Rabbein B'chai, some of the early commentaries write about this, that they actually represent the different letters of the name of Hashem. So it's like a, 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 a cosmic unification. So the, the three the three Hadassim, the three myrtles, represent uh, the Yud in the name of Hashem. The Yud in the name of Hashem, Hashem has four, there's four letters in the name of God, four letters in the name of Hashem. Yud is actually spelled with three, three letters, Yud of Dalet. So those three letters represent the Hadassim, that's Chesed Gvur Tferes, that's like the, the Yud. And then there's the two Aravas, the two, the two uh, willow branches, so that's uh, Netzach and Hoi, that's the He. He is spelled He He, two He's. So that's Netzach and Hoi, that's another tense to spheres. Then the Lul represents Yisoid, which is the Vav. And then the Malchus, the, the final, is, uh, is, is the Esrik itself. I know this. some people, this is going to be very foreign to them, this concept, but that, that, that essentially is that there are 10 spheres. There, there, there's 10 divine um, uh, attributes, as it were, correspondingly to the, to the four letters in the name of Hashem. And what's important, which is very important, and this is why it's very important that when we when we finish the blessing, we have to draw the esrig to the lulav and make sure they're unified. So the lulav itself has three of the elements already attached to it. So it represents uh, it represents uh, it represents all the emotion, all the emotional attributes, the six emotional attributes, the yud kevavki also But it's very important that we put the esrig attach it. To the lulav and esrig, because that creates the unity of the, the of the four letters of the name of Hashem. Because if you're separating the lulav and esrig, it's like you're separating the letters of the name of Hashem. There's actually there's the Shulchan the code of the Jewish law actually records a story of Menachem Rikanti, one of a great sage, one of the students of the Ramban, had a dream that he was separating the letters of the name of Hashem. He didn't understand it, and it turned out that the, what what was revealed was because the, he was not putting the esrig together with the lulav when he was making the blessing. And which is interesting, that generally, the there's different customs exactly how you hold the lulav and esrik throughout, throughout davening throughout hollow, because that's when you shake the lulav and esrik generally. Um, some have a custom like the chabad custom is to hold the lulav in the right hand and put down the esrik only when you do the nanui when you shake it you pick it up, but in the year of hakel, which is the year of in gathering which is a deeper level of in gathering. The custom of the Rebbe was, the Lav Trevor, was actually to hold the Esrik together with the Lulav throughout the entire Halal, because that represents a higher level of unity. So how can we have to make sure that we do that? In other words, what you're trying to do is on a cosmic level, you're drawing these these uh, these ideas. Okay, this is like at a super, super high level. Then we have to talk about this, how this works, Chaga Asif, the, 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 the holiday, the Yom Tif of ingathering on a pneumistic level. On, a, on an internal level, in our own life experience, not in the seasonal and, and, and an agricultural level, not in the collection of different people that are getting together, not in the name of Hashem, but actually in our own, in our own, in our own nefesh, in our own in our own soul, which is that you know, that the process, the process of sukkahs is the process of of this of this ingathering, is a person reaching full chula, full transformation. Because in, the, in, in, in processes of transformation, usually what happens is, like I spoke a little before, so, sometimes happens, is that in order to grow, we shed certain parts of ourselves because we feel like that's the only way we can actually move forward. But ultimately, that's not, that doesn't bring us joy. We, the ultimate joy in our life is that we, we can include everything. That's what the Chaga Asif, the element of the Asif, of the gathering. We have to gather all the pieces together of our, ourselves. To have actually Tshuva Shlema, to actually have full Tshuva, not half-dimensional tshuva, is if a person has like a certain sense of humor, 
and then they sometimes they make a, a very serious commitment to like become a Valshuva, to become more serious about their life. They to sometimes think that serious equates to losing their self the sense of humor, or let's say the artistic expression, whatever that is. And maybe for a certain stage in their life, that that's what has to be done. You have to let go in order to move forward. But ultimately, ultimately you have to like get together all the pieces together. You have to reclaim all the, those pieces. And then from that place, you can actually start growing in a healthy way. And that's the simcha. That's the joy. The joy is when I can pick up all the pieces that I drop throughout my life, gather them all together, and samech becomes samech. Joy becomes to grow because the, the sin and the tzaddik are interchangeable. And samech actually means vegetation. So you're taking a vegetation, you're taking all these ve these vegetation, these things that were once, that were attached to trees and, and to fruit, and you're saying, I am part of the tzamech. I'm identifying fully with what the idea of a tzamech, vegetation means. And what is tzamech? Tzamech means growth. And the growth that I have now is by drawing all these four elements, whether in the four levels of my own consciousness, also corresponding to Nefesh Ruch, Neshama Chayechid, whatever, these different levels of my soul, whether they represent the four levels of different types of people, whether they represent all the different types of seasons that are happening in the world, whether it represents a cosmic level, Yudke Vavke, everything is being asif. Everything is being drawn together, put it together, held in my hand, and I'm moving forward. I'm, I'm growing. I'm, I'm Tzameach. And that's the joy. The joy comes from the gathering everything together and from that place to create proper growth and proper movement, proper vegetation. I'm identifying fully. I'm holding this fully. And I'm, I am like the Tzameach. I am like this, this vegetation that is, that is growing. And that's a tremendous joy. That's a tremendous joy. That's why we, we dance on Sukkot. Sukkot is a very important thing to dance. And Siv writes that, that, that the Chag... It's, it's called Chag. It's, Chag represents like the dance, to make a Chag, to make a the dancing. Dancing is an important. Dancing means like I become lighter. I'm like, I'm not pulled down. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm being drawn to something higher, like like literally like a, like a tree that's being drawn to light, that's, that's jumping upwards. This is what it means. I mean, deeply rooted, but jumping upwards. And that's what uh, Sukkot is all about. And this four species. Thank you so much. That is a very profound look at what the Torah teaches us about joy. Yeah. And in that really our transformation shouldn't stop at just breaking down Correct. and uh, shedding the layers of who we are. Correct. Really it's, that's that's uh, step one. That's maybe. step one, exactly. And we need to complete it. Correct. Which is going to be through this joy of Correct. Circus. Correct. Thank you for listening to Rob Pinson's podcast. To submit questions or to sponsor a future episode, please email RalphPinsonPodcast at gmail.com. The link is in the description below.